What up, Houston? Bayou City boys. Houston Rockets. Mm-hmm. They are mm-hmm. they're not the talk of the town right now, but there are whispers of a new head coach coming very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, they've met with coaches, Frank Vogel. They're meeting with Sam Cassell. Um, there's a lot of coaches that they have in mind. Uh, Atkins, uh, Ime Udoka, all types of different ones. Nick Nurse. I guess we're going to break them down, who we think is a great fit, who we think is eh, not that much. And I guess we'll go from there. I guess who would you put as a... I'm good. I don't want that, I guess, type of coach. Nick, Nick Nurse. I, I'm not a real big fan of his. I, I just don't think that he's a real he's a real good game manager. I yeah. really don't. Like he doesn't he doesn't make a game game adjustments. And you know, kudos to you. You got a championship, but I think that was just as much luck as anything. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, it, it's for me, I don't really want him. Um, especially because the Siakam stuff's merged to him also, and I don't want him or him there. And I just feel there's better coaches out there for a team that is going to have cap young players, and I don't want to take my chance on you. As and I don't think he's proven to me that he's good at developing talent, and that's what we need. Like we, I, whoever the Rockets next coach in truly needs to be a leader. Yeah, a leader of men. You know what I'm saying? Like be the adult in the room because. No disrespect to our players, but they really are kids. Half them fools can't drink. Yeah. <laughs> they're called the goon squad for a reason. Yeah. It's like they're, they get a little wild, but you can see that a lot of them want to take that next step and they just need that guidance to truly guide them to that point. And I mean, Jalen Green was on his Instagram today saying his next goal is playoffs. He wants to make it to the playoffs playing. Like that's what he wants. So I like it. He's, he's determined. And I think this coach is going to be, hopefully, who helps them and him take his game to the next level. Um, I guess, how do you feel about, and a lot of people love it, um, we've talked about it a few times, Sam Cassell. You, I've been saying he should be a coach for two years now. Yeah. I just think it's the wrong time, wrong team. Like, I don't think we would be doing each other any favors right now if he was our coach. And then also, like, the James Harden link, I, I don't believe that to necessarily be true, but I don't want to risk it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want, definitely don't want to risk Harden coming back here. And I don't want a first-time coach. I really don't. No. I feel like we went down this route, and I get a lot of people are like, oh, it's the D'Amico Ryans route. It's totally different. It's not. It's totally not. different. Don't bring that nostalgia into this mix right here. No. Hey, Sam, we like you, bro. Thanks for the championship. Well, I just feel like it'll be a rough going for him, kind of like what it was for, like it is for Chauncey Billups in Portland. Yeah. It's like you're learning how to do your job on the job, and we're not in a position for you to do that. Like, no. we don't have a Dane Lillard. Y'all yeah, couldn't even make yeah. a playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 If he would have been before Silas, I would have been like, all right, fine. But now it's different. We went through Silas. We have young guys that are trying to adapt into that star power. You're going to get a top six pick. Yeah. You're gonna have cap. So yeah, I don't I don't really want you as my coach. Um I guess the three So here's my thing. Yeah, I've been back and forth for a couple yeah. days. Let me let you read my mind. You and I, I think, both been in agreement that we want Kenny Atkinson. Yes. So I think about that, right? And it's like, okay, why do we want him? Well, he did a really good job in Brooklyn, pulled that team out the mud. Yes. They they were getting better until Katie and Kyrie fucked it up. And when you think about that, it's like, okay, well, we have talent. Maybe he can do that with us, right? Yeah. But then I look at our team this past year, and it's like, what do we need besides that? Like, we need discipline. Mm-hmm. Kind of what Ime is good at. Exactly. But not only is Ime, in my opinion, going to be good for putting the players in check and holding them accountable – I'm not entirely sure I trust Kenny Atkinson to stand up to Raphael Stone. Yeah. But I know for sure Ime would. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Ime was basically like, eh, I don't give a shit. Yeah, fuck you. Like, get yeah. out. This is my practice. Beat it. Yeah. But then here's the thing. The only thing that I have, I mean, we've talked about maybe Ime can't develop talent either because he fell into a good scenario in Boston. Yeah. But do you think that that drastic change of like, 
us being our players being able to do whatever the hell they want to a sh- kind of militant approach like that big of a change is bad for team morale i could say yes but i think it'll definitely shake the feathers of certain players though yeah but i think like it's if you want to make it in the league you're going to listen to your coach type of thing yeah. like if you can't listen to your coach, hey, maybe it's not the place for you and you got to get going because if 10 players are react to him in a positive way and two of them don't, then, hey, the all two may need to get traded. Hey, go figure something else out. I don't and, even care if 10 of them well, yeah, respond I know. to it. I just need the two best ones. Yeah. No, don't start that one. Up. They're going <laughs> <laughs> to nah, they're the thing is, like, man, I, I look at, like, Ime and I'm like, who are teams, like, legit teams that are, like, looking at you? And there's legit contenders looking at you as, like, a coach. And then you look at, I mean, don't get me wrong, Boston's doing really well this year. But even the players spoke out whenever he got fired. Like, hey, I don't, you know, I, I didn't like that. Like, that was our guy. Kevin Durant Kate, and Kyrie were like, hey, you know, I don't mind him. Like, this is a legit guy. So, if well, let me ask you. I have one more yeah. question. Yeah. Because when when Brooklyn got good, they were playing really good team basketball. Yes. When Ime Adoka was the head coach of Boston, all we did was criticize them for playing one on one basketball. Yes. Do we just came off of a season where we played one on one basketball? So stylistically on court, is it Ime? bad for us on the court but good everywhere else might be that's what i've been thinking like on on court product you probably want kenny atkinson everything else you want Eme. yeah and it's like do i want the style of play to be more team oriented and then i can get somebody in behind him to help out in the the locker room and i i think that's where i we we kind of lean back on kenny yeah. It's like I can get some vets in here. I can get some staff in here to help with that and all that stuff. I'm just saying you like go back to the season before the bubble and the bubble season and what Kenny Atkinson did with it. he literally made stars, kind of like not yeah. superstars, but like D'Angelo Russell was an all-star in that system. Yeah. Jared Allen got a monster deal coming out of that system. Karis Levert made a name for himself. We know who Joe Harris is because of that. You know what yep. I mean? So he like the most out of that shit player. worked, you know what I mean? Yep. I'm thinking like on the court, which is all that fucking matters to me, really. I would rather have Kenny Atkinson. So I think I'm gonna stay with Kenny. Yeah, I have Kenny one, Ime Doka second. Yes, I said my wild card, and I think we we said it. You sold me on this one as my dark horse is is Tyron Lou from the Clippers if he gets. Be a trade that'd be dope. Or a <laughs> trade, I will take him as it because what you were doing with Russell Westbrook. And everything mm-hmm. else and dealing with a team with injuries i have to applaud you for that of how you are developing players also and i just want them to put somebody in that position that we could to make us have faith back in the team like the texans did with D'Amico. yeah and i, you I know think what I'm saying? yeah and for this one i think like D'Amico was a, a not a, a superstar but a lot of people talking about it like how he was a coach on the field already. Then he went to the Shanahan tree and became a coach deep over there. So that made a little more sense. I feel for here, we, we both agree. We need that coach mm-hmm. that has the knowledge already. That's been through the mud. That's dealt with the NBA turmoil to take these young guys to that next level of, Oh, Hey, y'all did this shit. We ain't gonna look back at that. Let's move yeah. to here. Let's yeah. get ready for playing. Let's get ready for, for progressing and all that. It just matters to me because, like you said the other day, when Jalen Green can cite the fact that you can't expect me to learn if there's nothing to learn from. Like, yeah. there's no curriculum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tari said it. Jab- like, you have to think about a player like Jabari. My dad played in the league w- <laughs> before I was yeah. born. So I come up through a structured system to, to learn how to get better in a certain way. And if you just bring us here every day to shoot around and not do shit, if you don't yeah. learn that way. No, yeah, I agree. And and I mean, yeah. That's why I think like for sure it's gotta be somebody that's older, knowledgeable, mm-hmm. can handle these guys and in that sense. I also you know, think that you have a like Kenny Atkinson got a ring with Golden State. Yeah. And what Mike Brown did 
to Sacramento coming off of that Steve Kerr tree, just follow the football trend. Like go to the hot tree and then take it off and see if you can replicate it. Yeah. And that's what I want to do with the Rockets. I'm all for it, man. Atkinson for Houston. Let's you heard make it here it first. Houston. Um, I guess Houston, y'all let us know who you think. I know um, there's a lot of names circulating. There's a few that some people are like, who's that? But I mean, I'm I'm kind of glad they're doing their due diligence while they take their time. But it will start to funnel out for sure of who's the real candidates, who's not the real candidates. And please, please stop just throwing names out there of <laughs> guys that are not even coaches. Like just because they played for the Rockets and, and stuff, I don't. Need I almost will dare say by the time we get to the conference finals, we'll have a coach. You have to give this coach time to decide who he wants in the draft. I I would say within the next 10 days to two weeks, the Houston Rockets will have a head coach. I agree. Because Rafael Stone already said, he goes, I'm not waiting. What's the point of waiting? I need to get now. Because draft, right after football draft, is literally getting ready for NBA draft. Yep. And it's in May. So you want to start looking at your scouting team, looking, especially if they're going to create a whole new staff. I need to see what I have. I need to see what we need. I need to see what veterans are out there, what trades are out there. That's another thing I want the new coach to do is you choose your assistant coaches. Yeah. And and that's that's the only thing I liked about I get it, Rafael's like, hey, I'm gonna, you know, tell him who I think's good. But if he wants to bring in his whole new staff, that's gonna be on him. And I was like, okay, finally, because yeah. <clears throat> yeah, John I Lucas, I love you, man. But if they don't want you there, hey get a whole new staff because we saw this last year. They were just wilding out with y'all, man. Like it reminded me kind of like when JB Bicker staff was like partying with the guys and everything. And yeah. I, like, I don't want that shit. Like it's that's cool, why I don't man. want them as our coach because like yeah. the, Silas can't take all the, the, the brunt of it because John Lucas was getting a lot of credit for what he was doing. It's like, well, if that's the case, why the fuck is, you know, a lot of the same shit still happening. Yeah. So he got to take some of that. And then plus, like, get some young guys in there who are kind of analytical, develop young new coaches, kind of try to see if you could get a successor to whoever you're about to bring in. You know what I mean? Like, let's be proactive for once. <laughs> let's be on the good trend of it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We're going to see. It's going to be a good, interesting month ahead of us um, with, of course, head coach. Then free agency, draft. We have a bunch of content coming up for the Rockets because they're going to be active in all three of them. Um, yeah, yeah, make sure y'all like, subscribe to the network. Bayou City Boys got you covered on all Houston sports. We got you covered with NFL draft for the Texans. We got you covered for Astros games. We got you covered for Rockets offseason. All types of stuff. Let me get a hockey team one day. We get some Sabercats news on our podcast. Everything. We got you covered. <laughs> but, yeah, y'all make sure y'all follow us. Y'all be safe, Houston. We out. Peace. How much I'm working for this? I swear my dreams are too important.